Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a little trip to the breeding facility where I'm going to show you guys how using a simple tool like a snake hook is going to prevent you from getting a nasty bite. So if you guys are new to snake owning or only own quite a few snakes that say on the pretty small size, you probably have never used a snake hook or even know what one is. Um, I know for myself a couple years back when I first started getting into snakes, I've never used one of these. Um, even when I had my red tail boa Viv when I first got her, she fit in the palm of my hand so there really was no need. As Viv got older, it became a little more tricky getting her out of the enclosure. And then the final straw for me when I started actually learning about snake hooks and tap training was the fatal day when I got a bite from her. Now at this point she wasn't at the size she was now, it was about, I want to say a year, two years back. Uh, she was probably around four or five feet, but still a pretty girthy snake. Of course the boas get a little bit bigger than say like a ball python uh, as far as like girth and width goes I guess. Uh, but um, uh, to be fair, the bite was completely my fault, I made a stupid mistake and wasn't really thinking and I got a bite from her. It was the only bite I've ever received from any of my snakes and uh, it hurt, it hurt pretty bad. Now although it was my one and only bite I've received from Viv, or really any of my snakes, uh, it was kind of a sucky experience. You know, not the end of the world, but uh, definitely something I don't want to repeat. So that's when I started getting into learning how to tap train snakes and use a snake hook properly. So I figured today I'd show you guys a little bit on how I started the tap training process with Viv, my red tail boa, and then go a little bit on how to do, you know, like full snake handling with more defensive animals like uh, my carpet python. So with that introduction out of the way, let's head over to the red tail boa's cage. Here we are over by Viv's cage, the red tail boa. Now Viv is currently in a 6 foot by 30 inch by 18 inch AP cage where she's spending just a little bit more of her life. This isn't her permanent enclosure but it will be uh, her enclosure for quite a little bit. She's still not at the you know full grown age of a red tail. So with Viv. Now just a disclaimer Viv or really any of my animals aren't an aggressive snake. I don't believe there is an aggressive snake. I believe there are defensive and reactive snakes but if I open this glass, open the sliding door, Viv's not going to crawl out and bite me. There's, she's not gonna just lunge out at me, you know. Uh, there's just animals that are most of the time fearful and scared and don't really know how to react. However, with Viv's size getting as big as she is now, I decided it's better to play it safe after that bite and just learn a little more tap training, making her a little more comfortable and myself. Real quick before we get with this demonstration, if you guys have not already and you like seeing some really cool animals, make sure to go to that lower right hand corner and hit that subscribe button. I won't tell you to ring the bell, although you probably should ring the bell because I make a lot of videos at least two or three times a week and they're pretty cool so you're going to want to check them out. Back to snakes. So before we get with the demonstration and talk about tap training, I fear we should go a little bit into the psychology of a snake. So how tap training really works is the fact that snakes really have just a few mindsets. There's going to be things like uh, feeding mode, exploring mode, and the flea response. So really 90% of the time when you open a snake, you can read the body language, open the cage, not the snake, come on. <laughs> but when you open the cage, the snake's going to think the first thing is, oh, this is food. It sees your heat signature, you know, you're pretty warm blooded, and you look like a meal to the snake. So the snake's going to be a little cautious and thinking like, oh, this is my snack. This is the main reason I see a lot of people have issues is they're not taking their snake out a lot or they're not very, they're not really interacting with them as much as they should be where they're only really in real interactions, them throwing meals to the snake. So the snake's identifying as the cage or enclosure being opened up as it's food time. So without the proper introductions that you're gonna be doing with your animal or really having any kind of interaction with it, this skin's gonna get a little tricky and you're probably gonna get bit. Really what we're gaining with, with the tap training method is we're trying trying to get the snake out of that feed response or the feeding mode that it's going to have and getting it to more either a flea or explore response. So now that we have that information down, now let's get to the demonstration. Now I'm going to try to angle the camera as best I can. It's a little tricky with how low the cage is. It's one of the things I actually don't like about this cage, but hopefully I can get a good angle where you guys can see everything and then I'll just be talking my way through it and showing you guys or telling you guys, you know, what I'm seeing. Right, so just opening the cage and taking a look at her, she's actually pretty relaxed right now. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to be seeing is those nice long tongue flicks. That's going to tell you that this animal is calm and is not in any uh, caution or worrying or fearful in any way. So this is a very good sign. All right, so really the easiest way to do it, it's pretty simple. You're just going to take your snake hook and just lightly tap it on the snake. There we go. Just want to make her know that this is not food time. We're not here to feed and we're just here to take you out, right sweetie? So the main thing you're going to be doing is seeing the snake kind of flead away. So now that we have that, alrighty. 
course, she's in her little playpen. Let's just get this out of the way. Thanks, love. Oh. And there you have it. And there we have it, it's that easy. Now, really tap training is a pretty simple method you can do and it doesn't really take long at all for them to really figure it out. It's just a simple way of cracking that snake out of its feeding response and putting it in a mode that makes sure that you don't really get bit. <laughs> Though with Viv, it's pretty easy with her. You know, like I said, she has a very calm temperament and isn't, hasn't really shown any signs of, you know, being aggressive in any shape, way, or form. Uh, however, with some of my other snakes, like the carpet python, um, it's a little bit of a different story. And I'll get into a little bit of that next. going to bring us to our next step which is proper snake hook handling. Now this is when you got to go a little bit more further than just the simple tap training and pulling the snake out. These are snakes that are going to be a little more defensive and a little more territorial to where they don't really want to go out for anything. So this is going to be a little bit easier than you just tapping the snake and trying to grab it and it striking at you. This is just a way to kind of scoop them out real quick and get them out of the environment to give them a little bit more or less, you know, like I said, territorial. And to show that example, we're going to go and to show that example, we're going to have to leave. To show that example, we're going to be putting... To show that example, we are going to have to be going back over to the carpet python's enclosure. Our way to the enclosure, let's talk about the carpet python. So, carpet pythons as babies are notorious for being a little more defensive, nippy, and all in all, just a little bit more spunky than your average snake. They usually calm down and really mellow out at around two years of age, but... Uh, uh, some may don't and some may a little sooner. It really all depends on the animal But as an average usually around two years is when they really start to chill out now I kind of already knew about this But I didn't really get to experience it until a couple months ago when I got my first carpet python uh, I realized tap training really wasn't going to cut it This snake did not want to come out of the cage And that's when I really figured that the actual snake hook handling part plays a huge part And once she's actually out of the enclosure and as long as she's being handled correctly She's a really mellow snake and like I actually have never been bit by her even though she's really sporadic, not sporadic, but spunky and kind of striking at me and things like that. I've never actually received a bite. And that's a huge thanks to doing just proper snake hand. And again, that's just a huge thanks to just using the proper tools, snake hooks, and just having the proper handling and the knowing the psychology and what the snake's really thinking. Check out this carpet python and see really just how defensive she could be. Um, I'll start out by taking her out, taking the hide out, and then kind of showing you how the tap training doesn't really work and how she's still pretty like, mm, get away from me. And then I'll go in and show you how to just do the simple stake handling or the hook handling. It's all really easy, but I just figured I'd make a little video of it. Pretty easy, and since she's still relatively small, I can do this with one hand instead of having to angle the camera, because to be honest with the extra terror thing, it kind of, this is exactly where I need the camera sight to be, and it's just going to be blacked out, so this will just be a little easier. But anyway, we'll first start off by removing the hide, and here we have this gorgeous girl. She's such a beautiful, she's probably my most beautiful snake in my collection. Uh, definitely one of my favorites as part as the collection goes. So right off the bat, if we're talking about snake's body language, you're going to notice some immediate differences between the red tail boa and this carpet python. Uh, for instance, we are not seeing any tongue flicking whatsoever, whether that be fast or slow. The animal is completely still, and her eyes are targeted on me. Uh, one of the things I will add is she really does not like the camera. I've noticed most of my reptiles really don't, so that has a part to play. All right, and then I'll show you guys just kind of what the tap training does. So real easy. You can see we're getting some tongue flicks now, but... All right, sweetie. So we're just kind of telling this girl that, hey, we are not food, but we're not getting the same response as we were with the red tail. This animal's kind of, as you can see, not very liking it very much. She's kind of flipping out, and see, now we have the striking. This animal isn't pleased by me just doing the tap training, really isn't receiving that, where are you going, sweetie? <laughs> that I don't mean her harm. She's still getting kind of scared, and now we're getting into that S strike position, so she's ready to inflict a bite. Now, this is where the snake hook handling trick comes in really into play. This girl is not happy. Oof, she's going to take a strike right at the camera. So real easy, you just want to find a spot where you can go and grab the snake up 
and out of the enclosure. Once she is out and about, definitely a little bit less reactive and strikey. Uh, the main thing I do now at this point is just real nice calm handling. I don't try to restrict the snake in any way, shape, or form. That's going to inhibit the same thing that we are seeing in the tank where she's going to be slashing out and really just flinching for flopping about. <laughs> Now with a snake like this, I like to just do smooth and easy transitions with my hand, just kind of going with the flow of the animal. I find this to be the most calming with them, where they're not having any sort of like fears or just really anything that they think is going to be uh, something scary. And man, would you just check this girl out? She is just simply gorgeous. Now this jungle carpet python is going to be one of my future breeders. I am getting a male sometime this year, uh, maybe a little bit sooner than later. I have seen a couple really nice yellow uh, jungles that I have been, um, that are male and are for a price that I can afford. Uh, so it's kind of just about when I'll have the funds to buy them. And then the next step is getting this girl up to size and age. This is probably going to be at least 2021 at, oops, see, it's a little sweetie. Now this is probably going to be around 2021. She's still, she's only a 2018 baby, so she's still fairly young, not even two years of age. Now totally you can see as well, totally, um, the fact that if I move too close to her face, she also doesn't like that whatsoever, which is why as you can see, I kind of try to stay at least uh, halfway away from the face. I see that she's a lot more calm with that kind of handling than getting too close. Very excited to be breeding them in the uh, semi-close future. Uh, Morelli has definitely taken a hold of my heart and I'll definitely be getting more down the line. I wanted to kind of start it slow and just get a pair of jungles and then, you know, raise them up as babies and then breed them, see if I can get some eggs and some babies and then go from there and seeing, you know, what else I would like in the, as far as, you know, the uh, carpet market goes. Well, we're not going to stress this baby out too much, so I'm going to be putting her back in her enclosure and we're going to be wrapping up this video. That's pretty much going to wrap up this video. Uh, hopefully it was pretty informative. I'm sorry if the red tail boa footage wasn't that good. It was really hard angling the camera and of course the lighting, the camera that does it, you know, does the autofocus with the lighting and I don't know how dark or light it was because I couldn't see it very well. But other than that, if you guys are looking for snake hooks, um, there's a couple different places to go. Uh, I found this one, which I really enjoy. This is actually my upgraded snake hook. Um, I got this one at my local expo. I really love it. I think it was like 15, 20 bucks. So not very expensive. I kind of like, I like the small ones as far as, you know, like tap training goes, so I wanted it with a little bit of length to where I can kind of go away if I need to tap train, but if it's like snake hook handling, I'd like to get a little bit closer. Um, I don't have anything too, too large, such as, you know, like retics, berms, things like that, where I would need a bigger hook. Uh, thanks, main loss. That's the only reason why I don't have those big snakes. <laughs> but as far as that goes, if you are just looking at starting out and you only have like, I don't know, ball python, corn snake, things like that, they do sell these at most like Petco's or PetSmart. It's like, we're Tractable, so that's pretty cool. It's some, that's something I like. Um, I bought a two pack of these. I had one for quite a while, but it eventually broke. They're they're kind of flimsy and cheaply made. So if you have anything more heavily bodied, like, I think even like a female ball python might be able to break this. I think that's what happened. I was um, handling the uh, red tail with it, and she totally she got on it while I was doing this and. She broke it. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much gonna wrap the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave me a comment in the comment section. I'm really excited, you know, did this help some of you guys out? Uh, did you guys think I was really shitty at it? I don't know, leave me a comment. <laughs> Oh, and other than that, if you liked the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at DBCB Exotics. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.